Okay, so uh, thank you for the wonderful announcement. Uh, yes, my name is Rainer Erich Schalterbauer. I used to do FundLab workshops. Uh, now I do workshops for a different fund editor, uh, which I hear has become rather popular here on the campus. And a, yes, uh, and yeah, I, I, I'd rather not say all the things that I usually do. But, uh, just, uh, otherwise, my time is over. Okay. I'm finished. How to work on a script for which there's no implementation yet? Yes, after all these nice talks you've heard since yesterday, you may think, oh, I'd like to do a non latin typeface, why not just something? <laughs> and, and maybe, maybe you, you don't want to walk uh, the, 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 um, the, the, what do you call it, the beaten path that everyone has walked before, you want to try a new script and um, something for which there's no implementation. Now, if you want to make a typeface for that, you will have to start in the front editor. So, uh, and perhaps, perhaps, if you want to do it with our products, then, um, then pay a little attention. <laughs> All right. Uh, you don't have to take pictures of my slides. They are all available online. You can find them on speakerdeck.com. Uh, you just type a slash after speakerdeck.com. Speaker um, yeah. <laughs> type in my... Twitter name, right? So you don't have to waste it. Oh yeah, this is the only slide. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's true. Philosophical, uh, uh, logically, it's like totally true. Okay, sure. but after this, you don't have to waste your precious uh, mobile phone space. Okay, um, if. Uh, usually, if you want to do, say, Southeast Asian scripts uh, that has not been digitized yet, um, then, then you will have to, um, and let's say it's also not implemented in Glyphs yet, so this is the assumption I made. Uh, then, in order to be able to talk to us and tell us how we should implement it into Glyphs, um, you have to be acquainted, uh, have to get acquainted with a few things. And for these, I'll, I'll show you three major resources that you should know that you should bookmark. Somewhere. Again, you'll find them all in the, in the on speakerdeck.com. First of all, script source. Um, this is uh, so. This is very, very, uh, very, very good source to find out if there's someone uh, who has done something for your script before. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's why she's in our picture. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> So, right. so, so if you want to find out if someone has taken a picture of you before, <laughs> you take a look on Flickr. <laughs> Type in French in 2015. Uh, okay, that's good. So, um, let's say you want to do something for Balinese, and oh, then you go into script source, click on I think scripts, right? Victor, am I saying that right? Um, and then you find a lot, a lot of uh, scripts listed there, some of which have no, uh, have an insufficient implementation, some have no implementation at all. Um, and to see what others have done, maybe, maybe you can build upon uh, stuff that others have done. Then that's a good place to start. So script source, something you should keep in mind. Bookmark it, yeah. look there. Uh, second thing is Microsoft typography. Um, they have an interesting website. Uh, you click on the open type specifications link, and then you find all sorts of uh, open type things uh, there. And most importantly, um, maybe your script is similar to another script that has been digitized already. Ah. Then maybe then, then that, that reduces the amount of research you have to do by a lot. Um, and, uh, so on the left side, you have to look here. Uh, for instance, um, uh, you, you want to do a script that is, I don't know, familiar uh, or related to uh, Bukinese or Hangul or, uh, or Javanese or something, you will find resources there. And what they tell you on the website is, uh, this is what it looks like, for instance, for the Javanese script. What they tell you there, for instance, is uh, which, which of the... <laughs> um, uh, is uh, which of the open type features you have to implement, or you have to think about. Um, 
for instance, pre-based forms or above-based forms. What is that? Oh. Yeah. And something else they will tell you uh, on their website is some terminology you have to get acquainted to. Uh, you have to know what is a character, what is a glyph. Okay, that's pretty that's a no-brainer for this audience. But maybe what's a content and what's a cluster? Mm -hmm. well, that's already a bit more difficult. Um, yeah, most importantly, which open type features do I need? Which open type, uh, open type features will I have to uh, take care of? And, and oh, very important, what uh, the difference between these two questions? Okay. <laughs> Again, you don't have to take a picture to this. So, uh, number one is what do you have to do in your open type features? And what is the job of the, I would not to say layout engine, but it's supposed to be the shaping engine. What is the job of the shaping engine? For instance, uh, reordering. Um, of, of glyphs, right? Uh, think of uh, who of you has made a Devanagari font already? Okay. Who can read Devanagari? Right. Okay, uh, so the rest doesn't. Okay, uh, then um, you may be, I'll, I'll show that later, that if, if you have an E in uh, Devanagari, it's, you, you type it last in, in a class that whoops, and, but the glyph is in, in front of you. And, um, but you don't have to take care of this in, in, in your open type feature. The shaping engine does that for you. So reorder the glyphs, and, um, and that's where you take out and, and build your open type feature. There's one thing you should not pay too much attention on this website uh, um, is that they will tell you how to implement, for instance, Chinese in something called. Vault. <laughs> now, if you are not familiar with Vault, <laughs> so don't don't scroll any further. As soon as you see Vault, <laughs> that's the very same. Now the, the thing is, um, it, Glyphs is a Mac-based application, and Vault is a Windows-only application. Um, and so, uh, what what Glyphs has implemented. Uh, in order to make open type features uh, or to produce open type or calculate open type features and everything, uh, is the AFDK. And that's the next thing, the Adobe FDK. Uh, we don't do our open type features with Vault, we do it with Adobe FDK yet. And um, this is another great website, just Google Adobe FDK and wind up on this website. And they will um, tell you how uh, Adobe does open type features, namely with feature code like this. Uh, you may have, who has done feature coding? Who has not done any feature coding? Oh, okay. All right. Who has no idea what I was talking about? All right. That was too late. Okay. Um, now, what you learn here is the syntax of an of a, a Adobe FDK feature probe. Uh, it's a good idea to know what a lookup is, what is a class, what, is, what does mark class mean, the difference between a substitution and a positioning feature. They want to pictures now. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and yeah, the terminology, the, what, what is a script in open type, and what is a language in open type, and what's the difference between those two. And after you read this website, oh, pay attention to, um, they have a pretty complete uh, um, syntax explanation here. But every once in a while, there's a little remark that says, not implemented yet. <laughs> so then you can safely skip this. Um, <clears throat> other than that, after this, you should be able to write some feature code yourself uh, in your preferred text editing uh, environment. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Um, good. All right. Oh, uh, actually, the fourth resource, Unicode. Get acquainted with Unicode. You should know what Unicode is, uh, what it does, and what it does not. Uh, you, you should be able to understand it after you understood the difference between a character and a glyph. Yeah? Um, and um, and there, if you're on a Mac, then there's a handy application called Unicode Checker. It's free. You can download it. And there's another free application called Ukulele from Sil. Um, and uh, with which you can make uh, keyboard layouts. Yeah? So if you, for instance, that's what I did, because I've been working on, on Balinese. Uh, uh, 
uh, for a long time, and uh, I've made my own Balinese keyboard uh, in order to you know, type it more easily. Good. Um, yes, you should be. Uh, you should know what is a letter. Of course, everyone knows what's a letter, but what's a letter in the Unicode term, uh, in the Unicode terms? Um, the difference between a space in combining mark and a non-space in combining mark. Yeah. What is a decomposition? Right. Um, after this, you should be able to know which glyphs in your uh, type design need an encoding and which don't. Yeah. Which glyphs should only be accessed through an open type feature. <clears throat> all right, let's put all these things together. Um, and now you can, can take our application right, and prepare it for your script. Um, there's uh, two or three things you should be able to do. It's fairly easy. Um, the one thing is um, uh, you should be able to uh, build your own glyph data. Uh, glyph has a built-in glyph database with currently about 54,000 entries, um, constantly growing. And maybe with your contribution, it will be soon 60,000 entries here. Um, and you see, every glyph that glyphs knows about, um, it, there is, it has, there's a name assigned to it, maybe a unicode. Uh, then uh, the, the, the category and subcategory here is, for instance, and another letter, whatever that means. Um, and uh, to which script it is supposed to uh, be attached to. And, um, and boom. And sometimes, it makes sense to have something called um, a composition recipe. Uh, so if your if your glyph can be composed out of other smaller glyphs, think about the A cute that can be combined with the A cute, right? Or the combined cute actually is much better. Um, <laughs> and then, or, or like here, the the bed can be um, the uh, Arabic bed can be composed out of the dotless bed. And, and the two dots horizontal above. Um, and the dotless bag can be reused for other things like the te, or the ne, or na, ne, mm, sorry. All right, so uh, in order to do that, there is a tutorial on our website called Roll Your Own Glyph Data. It's uh, pretty easy. Uh, all you have to do is write something. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Another thing, there's two tutorials. There's one is Roll Your Own Glyph Data. And there's getting your glyph names right, which is also pretty smart to do. And all you have to do is write something like this. <laughs> so now this this looks oh my god, we're gonna come back. No, it's, it's, this is not rocket science. This is very easy. Other people have done it before. And um, <laughs> they have they have given up and tears. <laughs> no no, no that's really very easy. You see, this is the definition um, of the tangbar that the harm of. Now who knows what the script tangbar is? Oh, I expected only Toshi's hand. <laughs> okay, now if you uh, if you don't know, watch Lord of the Rings, the movie, or read the book. Um, so um, yes, and this is this is basically the core of what what glyphs will eventually know about your uh, your the, the glyphs you need. Um, and if you put it all together, it looks like this. <clears throat> um, Again, this is, it looks like rocket science now, but it's very, very easy, it's super, super easy, and uh, it's explained step by step in the tutorial. I'm not gonna take you through it because after lunch everyone's tired anyway. So, you know, so. But um, really, trust me, it's easy. Um, and then you can go and uh, assemble your font. Um, you, uh, with the glyph data uh, that you coded, uh, then you can, for instance, define which anchors should be in the in, in your glyphs. Um, so this is a Balinese glyph that uh, can something can be attached to the left, to the right, on the top, and at the bottom. Um, and so this this glyph needs all these uh, anchors. <coughs> this way. Um, then there is something in um, because. Usually, for, for, the, for the scripts that are implemented already, glyphs can do a lot of open type feature automation. Um, um, uh, and here, because it's not implemented yet, you will have to implement it yourself. And you can do that. Uh, glyphs, every time you export a font, glyphs actually builds the whole FDK project in a, in a subfolder. Um, and you can open that folder. 
and add your own um, custom feature file next to it and write an include statement in the original feature statement. Why, why do I uh, recommend that? Because every, the next time you will export, this, this file gets overwritten, and so you want to keep yours on the other side. Um, and there's another uh, tip I got from uh, Miguel Sousa, is uh, Glyph tries to build a cheetah um, uh, statement in, in the feature file, and it's a Glyph definition, um, and, but it's, you know, because it's not implemented yet, it may not always guess right, and uh, if the trick to do is to delete a cheetah statement in the original feature file, and then recompile. Um, and uh, AFDQ tries to do a better guess then, and maybe you're right. So. Okay, and then all you have to do in the temp folder is to double click this file, which is, this is, this is the folder that Glyphs creates for every font you export, right? Um, and uh, you just double click the generate font command, and then you're, and then you're good again. It's, it's exported into the Adobe Fonts folder. Now, what, what do you have to tell us? Once you have a fairly successful uh, implementation going, or maybe you're not so successful and you need help, um, what's a great thing to send us is a sample font file, so we <clears throat> know what to do. Um, very good, very good idea is a sample rendering, so so we have an idea of what it should look like. Uh, is this uh, is this mark supposed to be here, or is it supposed to be there? Is it supposed to be smaller, or bigger? Uh, I don't know, right? Because we don't speak all the languages. So not. Um, and if possible, send us what you have in terms of Glyph data, XML, um, and maybe the open type features you, uh, you coded and where you um, maybe failed or were successful. Um, what we can do for you, uh, we can implement it in Glyphs in a way that, um, in, you know, uh, like we did for, for instance, the Magari. Um, just uh, open the sidebar, and you see all the Glyphs you need to build a, um, Decent implementation of a Vedangara font. Um, we can uh, supply, we can put your Glyph database uh, into our standard database, um, merge it with it, and then uh, we have default compositions. Um, so you can compose characters and they will stack it, uh, get stacked with the right um, components. We can add automatic feature code, which is really funny. Um, because all the stuff you, you were working on uh, with the feature code that you learned uh, so hard, uh, then it's like suddenly becomes a click of a button. Uh, do we have time for samples? Two minutes. So uh, I, I understand we're running late, but the idea was actually to. Oh, uh, <laughs> That's, my mouse is not moving. Is this supposed to be like this? Right. Okay. No samples. So, okay. Did someone do something to me? <laughs> now they're all getting back to me. <sighs> Stuff here. Ah. Uh, I don't know, something is wrong here. I cannot. Everything is like with a five second delay. Do you see that? Okay. Alright, um, maybe I'll not explain much because I have like a lag of five seconds on my machine. Um, but uh, what we can do, for instance, uh, is to automatically build um, uh, the open type feature code. Uh, that takes care of the right uh, Imatra replacement, or in this case, even the Imatra with the oops, added ref uh, at the end. Um, and you see, this this in the you know, this is the E, but uh, you type it last, right? Uh, but it's uh, the glyph appears uh, in the first position, and the length of this uh, thing on top, you know. Uh, depends on whatever comes afterwards. You see, sometimes it's very long, sometimes it's very short, and this is a hell of an open type feature to code uh, manually. If you want to do it manually, please feel free, no problem. Um, you can do that in any font editor. In Glyphs, for instance, you just uh, create uh, like 
for instance, 20 variations of your, of your Imatra, and this will, automat will automatically build that feature for you and pick the right uh, Imatras, uh, Imatra substitutions. Um, another thing is uh, work in progress um, is uh, Oria. This is a font by someone in the audience. I'm not supposed to say more. <laughs> no, everyone knows it. It's on the posters. Um, but I, I cannot move my mouse. Sometimes. Okay, maybe I'm static or something, or static electricity. Um, in any event, you see here a uh, similar thing, something we're implementing right now, um, is uh, first you saw the, the, this E thing that you know, uh, was sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Here it's this thing at the bottom here that needs to uh, adapt to, the, to whatever is above. You know? So um, this can also be automatically done and will be in the next update of your stuff, I hope. And so, one last thing. Oh, this is the Balinese I've been working on. Uh, but I want to see something else. And another, I don't know what's happening. Uh, good luck with it. <laughs> um, um, another thing is uh, Thai, for instance, you can have um, marks on top uh, here. What is it called again? To my, my Tom? My Tom. My Tom. Um, oh, a lot of marks. Uh, you can try. Oh, yeah. try to see if it helps. And, oh, that's better. Yes. Better for me. Yes. Yes. No, it gets stuck again. <laughs> uh, all right, now there's something, I don't know. So maybe the acrobat is too much. Turn off the Bluetooth. Huh? Bluetooth is too much. Turn off the Bluetooth. Turn off the Bluetooth. Oh, someone's trying to connect with me on Bluetooth. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, who is that? So. Oh, someone's having a clicker here and it's like. <laughs> no. Mm. No, still. Someone having a Wi Fi clicker. Now, I don't want to cut, cut the story short. Um, you have, uh, what we implemented in GLIFs is uh, all you have to do is place uh, anchors um, in these uh, uh, marks. I'd like to show that that's like everything's like, we use the opportunity. No, it's, I don't know, like some type of technical problem. Okay, um, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, these uh, spark marks will be stacked on top of each other through mark positioning, and they replace they get replaced with smaller versions if uh, if one one of these marks are on top of another mark. Right? So you see, this is theoretically the same uh, the same mark, but it's uh, all you have to do is call it my toe dot small. Right, and then it will uh, Clips will be able to uh, auto build the open file feature for you, and um, uh, yes, and, and it works straight out of the box. Unfortunately, uh, something's wrong with my computer. Run out of memory. <laughs> like, who used a uh, Commodore 64 in the 80s? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Who used it in the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> There are many heroes. Okay, uh, so bear with me. Everything was fine until I went to the samples. Okay, so let's leave it at this um, before I uh, before we go into other out of memory errors. Um, questions? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> I understand you're running late, so we have maybe time for half a question. <laughs>